I am a total candle newbie and I was able to use this 17 ounce electric wax melting machine by PEWF Household Equipment to make my first batch of homemade candles. This method required no double boiler so if that method makes you a bit nervous this machine could make candle making a little more approachable for you like it did for me. In this video, I'll demonstrate how I use this smart candle making kit to make a set of candles. Plus, I'll include info on what I learned throughout this process and what I would do differently next time. I wanted to try out a kit that would include everything I needed to get started. There are a ton of candle making kits on Amazon. I'll include the link to the specific candle making kit that I purchased in the description of this video in case you wanna get the same one. Let's unbox this kit together. It came in two boxes, one with the wax heat machine and the AC adapter, and one with all the supplies. The wax melting machine reminds me a little bit of a rice cooker. It's quite small, as you can see. I feel like the marketing imagery makes it look so much bigger, but maybe it's an illusion because they have a child operating it on the product photo. By the way, this is supposed to be for adults for safety. There is a short and sweet instruction manual, which was simultaneously simple and confusing. Some of the pictures don't reflect the kit, such as step five of this image showing the wax being poured from another container with a spout, which is not included. It comes with two four ounce candle tins to get you started. Shipping resulted in a slight divot in one lid, but not a huge deal, this is just for personal use. In addition to the tins, it includes the silicone mold. I was a little bit confused why this was included with the candle kit. I fell down a Google rabbit hole and learned all about wax sachets, which are used to freshen up small spaces like drawers, closets, cars, and bathrooms. I've never tried one, but now I want to. Look how pretty all these are. Maybe we'll make one eventually. But for now, let's get back to the candles. It comes with enough wicks for 50 candles, plus 56 double-sided glue dots. There's a long metal spoon too. The metal spoon made me a little bit nervous because it does go with a non-stick coating. We don't wanna scratch it. One pound of beeswax was included in four packs. According to the product description, that's enough for five four ounce candles. We've got two stainless steel wick centering devices. Now let's look at the wax melting machine. It consists of three parts, the body, the non-stick inner pot. The lid cover is translucent although I can't really see through it to monitor the wax. Let's prepare the candle containers. I peeled the glue dot backings off and attached the wick to the bottom center of the tin. Next, I place the stainless steel centering device over the wicks and set it over top of the vessel. Here is where I wasn't sure if the wick should be like wedged into this skinnier part of the key-shaped cutout here. The wick seemed too thick to stay within this section, cutting into the outer edge of the wick. Following the instructions on the kit, there's no guidance. Let's make some candles. Wait, how much wax do we need for two candles? So this is advertised as a candle making kit. However, the instructions are really generic. They don't actually guide you through the exact process of how to make the four ounce candles in your kit. I figured out on my own that I would want to fill the candles to the line on the tin and by volume, wax weighs 20% less than water. So I crunched some numbers and figured out that to do the four ounce tin, you actually need 3.2 ounces of wax for each candle or 6.4 ounces total for both tins. In other words, a four ounce container does not contain four ounces of wax, which is not exactly intuitive for someone who is totally new to this. The kit doesn't include a scale, so I got my kitchen scale out, I measured it out, plus a little extra. Let's melt the wax. I poured the measured beeswax beans into the inner pot of the wax melting machine. It barely had enough room for the 6.4 ounces of wax. I turned the machine on and selected the solid button. The instructions recommended this setting when using wax with the bean look. For solid wax, it sets the temperature of the machine to 185 degrees Fahrenheit or 120 degrees Celsius? Question mark, question mark, question mark. If it's a canned wax or shaved wax, the instructions just trail off. 
dot 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 no instructions for you we can assume that when we're setting to the can setting it would change the setting to 167 degrees fahrenheit or 75 degrees celsius and now we wait think these are gonna turn out buddy at this point, I was feeling pretty confident. The wax was melting, nothing was on fire, and all was well. Oh, it is melting. I'd been following the text space instructions on the back of the instruction manual. Now I was confused. In the printed instructions, it doesn't tell you to adjust to 70 degrees Celsius after a certain amount of time. It doesn't make any mention of 70 degrees Celsius in the set of instructions at all. So at this point, I've done 10 minutes on the automatic temperature for solid. And on my display, it's showing 237 degrees Fahrenheit or the equivalent of 113 degrees Celsius. I was not sure if this was fine. So I was second guessing myself. I panicked and I switched the units to metric and reduced the temperature manually to 70 degrees Celsius as per the picture guide. In retrospect, I think I would have been fine to keep the temperature on the automatic setting. All in all, the instructions were throwing me for a complete loop. My understanding after rereading the fine print is that it will raise the temperature up to a maximum of 120 degrees Celsius in order to melt it more quickly. But after the melting is completed, it will return the device to either 85 degrees Celsius if you chose the solid setting or 75 degrees Celsius if you chose the canned setting. The instructions never indicate that you need to wait for the machine to automatically cool on its own. However, neither the solid nor the can setting is set to 70 degrees Celsius, so the messaging is super confusing. I let the machine do its thing, and after about 22 to 25 minutes, give or take, um, even with the reduced temperature that I set it to, it looks like the wax successfully melted. This kit doesn't include any fragrance oil or any dyes. However, I did purchase a set of candle dyes from Candle Shop in a variety of colors sold separately from the kit. All the packets in this set were 0.1 ounces, which seems small, but you only need a tiny bit for a candle. I'll be using this aquamarine 12 color for my first attempt. According to the candle shop instructions, to dye 2.2 pounds of wax, you would need around 0.08 ounces of the dye minimum. Since I was making 6.4 ounces of the candles here, I only needed 0.015 ounces. But I had a problem. My food scale was not sensitive enough to measure to this degree. In fact, after zeroing out my scale, even if I dumped the whole packet in, it didn't register the amount. I ended up eyeballing an amount, and I suspect it may have been a little too much, but at this point I figured I'd just give it a try and I'd adjust my expectations for next time. Once the wax was completely melted, I mixed in the flakes of dye. According to the dye packet, melting the dye requires a temperature to be between 152 degrees and 194 degrees Fahrenheit or 66 degrees Celsius to 90 degrees Celsius. I was sitting at around 70 degrees Celsius at that time, so I was ready to go. At this point, I put down a piece of craft paper over my surface just in case there were any spills. I filled my containers up to the fill line, pouring from the spout, which is really not much of a spout. And there's a fill line on the edge of the candle, so we'll try to aim for that. It's not exactly easy to pour from such a wide mouth area. I feel like they could have designed the pot in such a way that there was a, still a spout on the inner pot and have it just nest in a certain direction in the machine body. There's gotta be a way. I had a little bit of extra wax, so I ended up pouring it into the silicone mold provided with the kit, just for fun. Since this wax isn't scented, I have no idea what I'm actually going to do with these, but I just wanted to see how it would turn out. I think I should have poured it a little bit thicker. I didn't have that much wax, but I should have just done two of them instead of three. So now it's time to wait and see how these candles set. The kit does not indicate how long you should wait before burning. Some websites say to wait 24 hours, while others say two weeks for beeswax candles to fully cure. This is how they are looking not long after pouring them, same evening. 
While we wait, let's talk about the candle making process with the PEWF Beeswax Candle Making Kit. Overall, how do I feel about the kit? Keep in mind that I am brand new to candle making, so I'm not comparing this to any other kits out there or to any other experience. This is my literal first experience other than melting some old candles and pouring it into jars just to kind of reuse that wax. I was looking for a way to make candles occasionally for my own use with minimal fuss without the use of a stove since I'm typically crafting in my basement and there's no hot plate or stove down there. The machine itself seemed well made. I wish that the lid was clear rather than slightly translucent. And although the machine is it's, it's quite light, it also feels nice. If I were to make any requests about the design, I wish I could have the set temperature and the actual temperature separate on the display. That way you could see what the machine was trying to do versus what it's currently sitting at temperature wise in comparison. I spent a lot of time in confusion about whether the machine was set to the correct temperature. I also wish there was a true spout on the inner bucket. When writing the script for this video, I returned to the product listing to get some key details, and I actually noticed that there's more succinct instructions included on the listing itself. If they had printed out these instructions and just tucked that into the supply box, I think it would have been a way better experience. So here's the instructions that they include on the listing. Our candle making kit only needs six steps. Step one, measure. 2 ounce container needs 1.5 ounces of wax. 4 ounce container needs 3 ounces of wax. See, those would have been, that would have been great to know without having to calculate on my own and research the weight of water versus the weight of wax. Step 2. Pour the wax and start. Step 3. Fix the wick in the middle of the container. Step 4. Wait for the wax to melt and cool to pouring temperature. That would have been great to know. The instructions make no reference to cooling or that it would automatically switch to cooling. Step five, pour the wax liquid into the container. Step six, wait for solidification. You can make beautiful scented and creative candles as decorations or holiday gifts. And included on the listing is also, they include the melting point of beeswax for our reference, the pouring temperature, the suggestion of ratio for fragrance to the rest of the candle, the ratio of dyes, the temperature that essential oil needs to be added, like all sorts of really relevant information that as a beginner, who is the target audience of this kit, beginners would like to know this information without having to cross-reference a bunch of websites that all have conflicting information. Like if you're, if you're doing the kit, have everything laid out. That would be excellent. Okay, now that that's out of the way, <laughs> the final result. Here is how my very first candles turned out. I actually love the color, they turned out great, but there's quite a lot of dipping. And I think that this is most likely from those temperature fluctuations where I was fussing with the settings, trying to figure out what was going on. It was a bit of a disaster, but that was my first time. And this is just a realistic video of how my first time using this smart candle kit went. That This is how it went. So let's see if we can flatten it out with the power of a hairdryer. I don't currently own a heat gun, but I feel like if I want to do candles long term, I may want to get one. I also tried remelting my excess wax and pouring that excess on top of the candle to smooth out the dips. Here's how both methods turned out. The new wax layer seemed more consistent compared to the hairdryer method to me. Let me know in the comments what you thought about this candle wax melting machine. Have you tried it out? I've got more wax being delivered soon, so I'll share more candle making adventures in the near future. If you're not subscribed yet, now is a good time to follow me so you don't miss it. This is Craftcore signing off. See you next time.